Sound stereoscopic, then television, says Harold Lloyd. Exhibitors Herald World, June 15, 1929. Visionary leaders of the motion picture industry who seized on sound and dialogue accompaniment to revive what undoubtedly was a lagging interest in the silent drama are looking forward to even greater advances in the art and within a comparatively short time. Sound and dialogue, which figuratively flashed out of the sky like a meteor, has opened up new channels for the motion picture, created a new interest, and has aroused a competitive spirit in the industry itself, which has been akin to pouring new bloodstreams into the veins of a wavering life. Harold Lloyd, who has been responsible in a considerable measure for some of the great advancements in the comic art in years past, has been quick to seize on the possibilities that sound and dialogue offer. But he foresees an equally important step forward in the prospects that are now offered for third dimension films. I always have considered that stereoscopic pictures would do more for the screen art than anything else, and I cannot get that thought from my mind. Sound and dialogue have opened up new bags of tricks for motion picture producers, but more especially the comedians. But from the public point of view, one of our greatest triumphs will be recorded when we can give real life to our characters on the screen through stereoscopic pictures. Another great advancement will be television. It does not take much stretch of the imagination to see ourselves a few years hence, sitting by the old fireside, a radio outfit at our elbows, turning the radio knob and seeing any one of our favorite stars on our own home screen, through the medium of television. Two years ago, we would have laughed at anyone who predicted that talking pictures would soon be the vogue. We used to scoff at the possibilities of television. Yet we have seen such remarkable demonstrations of the latter that we can realize it is only a question of time before its use will be practical and general. No one can foresee definitely just what progress will be made along this line, but it is bound to be a marvelous development. I can picture a central powerhouse, we will say, sending out the evening's entertainment, which will include three or four motion pictures from which the audience can take its choice. I do not want to create the impression that the theater is doomed. That's impossible. But the theater will be supplied from the same central powerhouse, knowing in advance, of course, just what its picture will be, and billing it accordingly. Such strange things are happening in this age we live in, that no one can foretell what will happen next.